So, uh, there's a lot of people who made a lot of really bad assumptions. There's also a lot of people who wanted to go through and just find the parts they thought they could use to paint me as a bad guy. Those didn't work so good. Some of these Natalie groups, I'm reading some stuff from some folks. A lot of folks have the same ideas. A lot of folks have different ideas. But I noticed the, uh... People who stuck up for me seemed to be the ones who went through and tried to read everything instead of the ones who were skimming just for parts they hate who they hate. I also noticed that the people who actually spoke with me instead of the ones who only texted got a much better idea of what was going on. As far as, uh, what happened on my birthday for me and Natalie to have an issue? <sighs> well, her mom found her heroin. And, uh, it got worse after that. That was the last time that I ever saw her. It got worse after that because Natalie wanted to meet up with me. She still wanted to talk with me. We were still friends, but I was having difficulties with a telephone used to be Natalie's old telephone. Now the reason I'm bringing this up, despite the fact that I've already said it a billion times, is because as I read through this stuff, people keep asking these questions. Well, if you stop asking those questions, I'd quit answering them. I also noticed that uh, Kara Johnson spent some time bashing me and some sticking up for me. Kind of a half and half thing going on. Maybe she's bipolar. <laughs> Mentally ill. I also noticed that Karmi is up there. And of course, she didn't tell the full truth, and I wouldn't expect her to. Not after the dealings that I had with the woman. However, there's a lot of questions that people ask. Like, when I was letting uh, Natalie know that I was coming to her place, can't come to my place. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because of her mother's opinion. That was perfectly acceptable with me. Um, we didn't just go out on my birthday. We went out on three separate occasions. The first occasion, Natalie, Alicia, and two drunk guys came to pick me up and take me to <gasps> Virginia Beach. Well, my car stayed parked over at the uh, Walmart parking lot across from the Starbucks that I was staying at. And uh, Alicia didn't like that idea. She didn't like the idea of me being so far away. She wanted me closer to where she worked. Now, this is something that Natalie wrote down in the protection order that was an untruth because Natalie didn't work there at that point. Alicia did. There's a lot of stuff like that that's in there, where people just didn't want to tell the full truth. They wanted to omit information. Now, I didn't learn how to take screenshots until past the middle of January. This is after Natalie's already dead. Um, I'd already spent a year trying to get a lawyer to get somebody to listen to me so that I could get this to stop, so I could go see my loved ones in Boulder without being spat on, or hit, or kicked, or called a child molester, or rapist, or anything of that nature, or a stalker. That's the worst one right there. That's what got it all started. But we need to go all the way back to the very beginning. Where did all of this, me and Natalie not getting along, start. Well, it started over a telephone and an argument with Miss Jerry. I got into that argument with Miss Jerry while I had my old phone. When I got the new phone, Natalie's old phone, from Miss Alicia, I started using that one. I was still arguing with people, and now I had a phone that would get onto the internet. 
So I got this internet phone that I'm arguing with people on the internet with. Now mind you, there's a lot of posts from around that area where it's it makes absolutely no sense. I don't just go from being a happy person to all of this shit that's happened. You know? Like, I was consistently the same Sean forever. There's a reason for that. Because I don't like confrontation. I don't like fighting. I don't like meanness. And until it's extreme cruelty upon me or somebody around me, I try not to get involved. Now, as far as uh, Natalie inviting me to Virginia, we kept in contact the whole time I was going. We kept in contact every single day. And, you know, it, it sucks that all you guys get to see is the Facebook, because there's a lot of stuff that we texted back and forth that really is important. There's a lot of things that we said on the phone that really is important. But when it all comes down to it, I was the one being assaulted over the things that she said, not the other way around. The other thing is, while all of these people were harassing me for the volunteers, they weren't alone, because Alicia got in on the act. Her dad got in on the act. Her stepmothers got in on the act. Did any of her stepmothers ever ask me not to talk to them? No, not even once. Matter of fact, they were talking about coming and having coffee. Danica decided that she was going to block me because I said that Alicia belongs in prison. Yes, I have proof of that. <clears throat> like most things, I saved the evidence. Like most things on Facebook, it's got a timestamp on it. Now, there's uh, a lot of crazies that I had to deal with. That Karamia lady is nuttier than squirrel turns. That doesn't mean that the things that she said were incorrect. What's some of the other stuff that was uh, in some of them questions? Um, let me see. Hmm. Do not put words in my mouth. Does not condone SS's behavior. Blah, blah, blah. Well, let's just get to the point here. While I was being assaulted over things that I didn't do, nobody was assaulting them over the things that they were actually doing. When uh, we were in Virginia, the three places that we went were all three Natalie or Alicia's idea. None of them were my idea because I didn't know the idea. Now, my friend Moose, a lot of you guys are like, well, he, he went there just for Natalie. Well, no, my friend Moose was supposed to be there. Amy and Andrew Witcher, they actually exist. Their mother, her class name is Kelly, by the way, lives in the Tidewater area. She paints houses, which uh, shows you that I was really trying to do something there. I wanted to run around and see the sights when I spent all of my money rescuing Jamie and the boy. That was my Virginia money that I spent. I had enough to pay to go to Virginia and to rescue Mahalia Miss Natalie and to leave and that was my plan originally but it didn't end up working that way Miss Mahalia got on a an airplane back home and uh, the other people that I was there to see either didn't reply or they were in jail or 
they moved on already. So that's something that is important to remember too. Is that even though you guys got your own ideas about it, this is all stuff that I've answered before. Um, as far as uh, autism goes, let's pretend I'm not autistic. Let's pretend that I don't have Tourette syndrome. Let's pretend that I'm just like you guys. Well, I'm going to get frustrated at stuff, the same as you guys, except once you put the uh, mentally ill tag on somebody, they're not allowed to react how you guys are. You guys are allowed to get angry at me, but I'm not supposed to get angry back. You're allowed to assault me. I'm not even allowed to put anything forth that might make you consider that I might do something like that because you allow your paranoia you. Now me, I'm facing all of my fears. All of this stuff that happened is all of my worst fears. Being falsely accused of such messed up stuff and they wouldn't lock me up forever and they wouldn't kill me and they wouldn't allow me to defend myself. Yes, I'm in hell. See, these opinions on these Facebook groups they're not just opinions. These are the things that people have been harassing me, threatening me, and assaulting me over since I left Virginia. It's not a choice that I made. I didn't go, hey, I got a great idea. Today, I'm going to have Maddie go spread rumors about me. I didn't make Natalie too afraid to speak to her mother. I didn't make Alicia too afraid to be honest with her. And the main thing is that Alicia typed at me. She was typing at me because of a phone that she had given me. Not entirely giving me. I mean, I, I had to pay for the service and all that. But then she kept it in her name, so that screwed me over because, well, when it came to renewing that, instead of uh, being able to spend... 25 bucks on a phone card like I normally would have. It was, uh, I gotta come up with a phone and money for a phone card. Which is difficult. I mean, especially when all of your money gets taken like it did there. That was such a screwed up situation. Now, as far as the, uh, police, the police, the reason that they're not into doing their jobs is because they don't have to. When it's a pretty girl, well, people might make waves. When it's a homeless male who's bald, people don't really care. The ones that do probably can't do much, and the only reason they care is because they've been in that situation. Which is part of the reason that they can't do much. Poverty it's not a choice, it's a design. Something we all got to deal with. As far as me speaking out against Natalie and her family, well, I didn't want to have to do that. What happened on my, on my birthday in Virginia for things to go so terribly south? That phone, what, you think I just went from being Sean to being some dude who's wigging out over nothing? No, I don't wig out over nothing. I wig out over things that are actually happening. Now, sometimes my mind plays tricks on me. Does that mean that I'm hallucinating? No. It means that nobody's above being fooled. That pocket dial, while I was at Candace's, that was a very well-placed pocket dial by Miss Shelley. And that police officer was magically right there already. With a grin on his face when I told him that Miss Shelley could be being beaten to death right at that very moment.
So yeah, you guys go ahead and be as sick and just as you want. I'm pretty sick and by all of this as well. Oh, it looks like there's even more. Um. Ah, this is a good point. This is something that bothered me as well. This lady said something that's been bothering me about the text is that whenever she shares with him about her struggles and things she's been through, instead of empathizing or sympathizing, he manages to bring his shit up. Yeah, I did. I noticed that. It actually made me cry. Um, I also tried to come up with solutions with her for her issues. We also talked on the phone and we also texted each other. Of course, you don't get to see all of that. It'd be nice if I could show all of that. It'd be nice if I had all of that. Now, as far as me, the trauma that I grew up with, the things that I had to endure, I mean, there's no sympathy for that whatsoever, because I'm not pretty and female, and I'm not addicted to heroin, and I don't go hopping around from party to party. I don't get to go to college. Really, Natalie had a pretty pampered life. She had some very good things going for her. Worst part of all of this is that uh, if I'd have been able to take screenshots, I could have just sent those to Natalie. She could have called off the dogs and that would have been the end of it. Ken and Leah hadn't stolen my money, I'd have had the money to actually go to court. Could actually, well, I wouldn't have been able to show screenshots, but I could have taken my computer and showed the actual evidence. I didn't understand how, screen, how uh, not screenshots, I didn't understand how protection orders work, though, because I'd never had one. Never needed one. I don't have any interest in hurting people. The problem is, when people assume the worst, well, they do some pretty stupid shit. I'm just going to assume all of the black people in my neighborhood are thieves, so anytime I see a black person on my porch, I'm going to shoot him. Right? Is that an intelligent way to think? I'm just going to assume. I'm just going to assume. I'm just going to assume. Don't you ever get sick and tired of assuming? Well, no, of course you wouldn't. It's too easy to hurt people. It's too easy for you to make excuses to hurt people. And one thing that should be mentioned also, the honking of my horn in Virginia. I was stuck in two lanes of traffic with people speeding past me, honking their horns at me. Yeah, first of all, I was scared. Not just for myself, but also for them. Second of all, yes, I laid on the horn. Instead of people narrowly missing me, I'd like to eliminate the narrow part there and make sure that they missed me. Now, as far as uh, Natalie uninviting me from Virginia, that never happened. Matter of fact, when she typed that thing about uh, not just showing up at her mom's house, I was already in Virginia, and she knew I was on my way to Virginia. We'd spoken every day. I let her know every single day where I was at on the road. She knew I was coming. Now folks want to blame me for the things that her sister and herself wanted me to do. The things that they asked for. The things that they had me do or gave to me. The thing is, everything from those two young women ended up being poison. All of it. Of course, they didn't want their party to end, now would they? Maybe they should have told the truth. Now, when I said I would retaliate against Ted and Tim, I meant it. If 
I'm going to be accused of things that I didn't do, if I'm going to be assaulted for things that I didn't do, yet these men did it, well, yeah, I'm going to for surely point the finger at the man who did it. You should have left me alone. If you're going to call me a child molester after telling me that your dad molested, And that's the issue. Natalie never once called me a child molester. Never once called me a rapist. It was other people who were trying to impress her. Why were they trying to impress her? Because she was pretty. And because she would do things for drugs. Why did she go to those people? Because they had the drugs that she wanted. While well, people were accusing me of getting Natalie addicted to heroin, they could have taken a look at the uh, email that she sent me. They'd know where she started the heroin at. Y'all should know me better than 